Hi, my name is Daryl Peterson and I'm the manager of the Applications Engineering Department here at MicroMeasurements. This afternoon I'd like to take a few minutes and show you an example of a full bridge circuit, this one for measuring torsion. If you look at this image, what you'll find is that we've got two strain gauges mounted on opposite sides of a tube. Uh, these are very typical uh, CEA series strain gauges that are used for measuring uh, torsion. And we put two of them on, one on each side, and we put them on opposite sides so that effectively we can measure the torsion and cancel uh, any bending that happens in this tube. If you look closely, the strain gauges look sort of like a chevron or maybe like a, a pitch on the roof of a house. Um, if you look closely, you'll see that there's two grids on each gauge. These grids are at plus or minus 45 degrees off their long axis and each grid is at a 90 degree uh, direction to the other one. So they're perpendicular. Uh, you'll also notice that there are three tabs on each one of these strain gauges. The three, th three tabs basically mean that you're going to have to wire the strain gauge at least as a half bridge or like in this case a full bridge if you use two of them. The wiring of this is actually very simple. If you look at it closely you'll see that we've got it labeled as P plus S minus, P minus, and S plus. P plus and P minus, that's the red and the black wires, that's your excitation for the circuit. S minus and S plus, that's your signal out. And in this particular case, we chose to position the signal outs on the common tab, which I think is pretty convenient or is a uh, convenient way to do it. So the two gauges get wired together in a full bridge. In the direction that we've got the torsion load shown. In this particular case it would produce a positive uh, voltage out. If you were to reverse that torsional load then it would produce a negative response out of the circuit. Very, very commonly used. Probably is the most common circuit that's used for measuring torque and a huge advantage of using these 187 UVA strain gauges is that by splitting, effectively splitting the grids and putting them on each side that allows you to cancel bending loads that can be common sometimes uh, when you're trying to make these torque measurements. If you look at the summary, assuming the gauges are the same, preferably selected out of the same package, and certainly they're glued onto the same material, each individual grid should produce about the same thermal response. And if all four gauges produce the same thermal response, then effectively they're going to cancel uh, in the Wheatstone bridge. And as I mentioned, this would be sensitive to torsional loads. And assuming we do a good job of positioning the, the gauge one 180 degrees to the other and get the alignment correct, uh, this will cancel axial, side, and bending loads. If you were to calculate the number of active arms, you would find in this case, since all four gauges contribute the same amount, just two in tension to a compression, you'd find that your number of active arms is equal to four which basically means that you're going to get four times more output out of this circuit than you would if you were to just glue on a single gauge. So if you have an application where you're trying to measure torsion in a shaft or a tube, uh, this is a great way to do it. It maximizes your response, it cancels the unwanted responses such as temperature uh, and bending, and maximizes that response to the gauges due to torsion. If you'd like to find out more about how to build a full torque bridge, please feel free to visit the website at www.micro-measurements.com.